Hey guys, and welcome to the Watchtower Watch Reviews with your host DK. And today we're taking a look at a possible alternative to the Citizen Navi Timer or the Seiko Flight Master, a watch by Casio. So with Casio's, it's a budget watch, so it's about the 50, 60 euros mark, and it's the Casio MTP 4500. So a really good looking watch. It has a slide time bezel, so you can do calculations if that's your thing. But is it any good? Well, we're going to take a look and find that out. Let's get to it. So time for the unboxing. So I got this one from a website called Storks. Uh, I'm not sure how prevalent they are around the world, so I'll find the cheapest price I can find for you. I paid about 68 euros for this one, including taxes and shipping. So you get the plastic Casio stand inside the cardboard plastic or the cardboard Casio box. You get the manual and you also get the code, which is the MTP 4500D-1AVCF, which is this very nice orange and black pilot style bezel watch. Very nice, there is also a blue variant, but it's about five times the price. You do also get the spare links. So, dimensions on this one. So you're looking at a diameter of 41.5 millimeters, 44.2 if you include that pusher. 44 millimeters across the dial to the crown at three o'clock. Uh, lug tip to lug tip is 47.6 millimeters, aided by those female end links, so it wears quite short, which is nice for people with smaller wrists. Lug width on this one, 22 millimeters, tapering all the way down to 17.7 millimeters, back up to 19.4 millimeters at that clasp. Thickness on this one is 11.3 millimeters with a flat crystal. And the weight with all links is 140 grams, but with five links removed from my seven inch wrist, it comes in at 124 grams, almost a feather. So specs on this one, well it is all stainless steel construction on the case, crown, the bezel and of course that bracelet with an aluminium black insert. The bezel insert is actually a slide rule bezel so and it is a friction bezel so if there is no clicking it just turns both ways allowing you to perform calculations for things like miles per hour, kilometers per hour, nautical miles etc. You've got a mixture of polishing and brush so you've got high polish on the case sides and on the crown and the pushers and then you've got brushed on the upper lugs as you can see there with the bracelet. Speaking of the bracelet, it's mainly brushed with just a small strip of high polish going down the very center of the links as well. It's high polish on the sides of the links. They are push pin links and it is fairly basic uh, bracelet. So you get hollow end links and you get hollow folded links, which is the case with most Casios to be fair. You get a signed clasp, however, it is only a pressed clasp. Nothing spectacular, but it does have four levels of micro adjust. The mineral crystal, as you can see here, has no dome at all and it has no anti-reflective coating as far as I can tell. I wouldn't expect it really for the price of about 60 euros. The crown is pull push, so you don't have a huge amount of water resistance and it's also uh, just pressers for the actual stopwatch feature. And you can see there, it is a screw down case back giving this one 50 meters of water resistance. Enough for day to day, but I'm not sure I would trust it swimming, although Casio are always stingy with their water resistance, it normally goes up a bit more. The movement inside is a Casio 4755 quartz chronograph movement with three subdials. You've got the minute tracker, the hour tracker, and the running second hand. I'm just gonna take my glove off here so we can actually get the movement working. So pull the crown out once and it allows you to set the time. The second hand stops down at the six o'clock position. If I could just get that out, you can see there that has stopped nicely and you just turn it there to adjust the time. As there's no date one, there is no date position. To start the chronograph movement, you simply push the top pusher. If you want to stop it or pause it, you push it again, as you can see here. So it's stopped and then to reset, just push the bottom pusher. So time for a look at this one under the macro lens. You can see there, this one has applied indices and they are simple marked indices all the way around. Nothing really is too spectacular. You've got a printed track around the inside there as well for the minutes and you've also got a printed track for the slide rule function. You can see there the subdials are also printed and inset into a very nice kind of concentric circle design. Casio chronograph 50 meters at the three o'clock position, Japan movement down there at six and the three subdials as I say, you've got your running seconds down the bottom, you've got your hours actually for chronograph tracking on the left and the top subdial is the minutes tracker for the chronograph. So once the orange hand completes a full revolution, it will actually move on one minute. So you'll be able to track anything up to 11 hours, 59 minutes, 59 seconds. 
and here it is out on my seven inch wrist so you can see there it flows down quite nicely into the wrist thanks to those female end links it sits quite nicely down that bracelet might not be to everybody's taste but i actually quite like it i don't think it's too bad at all you can see there it sits very low into the wrist no uh, logo on those pushers or on that crown i should say this is a casio i don't think i've ever seen a signed pusher or crown on a casio also, if you hate that bracelet, I would suggest sticking with something like this. This is a black and orange marine national strap. They cost me something like 250 or 320 euros or something like that on AliExpress. I'll drop an affiliate link down below, of course, but I really think it suits it with the color scheme of the watch. However, if you don't like that, it looks equally at home on leather. Again, these are AliExpress straps. I tend to buy a lot of my straps on AliExpress because I buy so many of them that if I was to buy 20, say, watch gecko straps, I'd probably be spending about 130, 140 euros. With 20 of these, I'd probably spend about 40 quid. Not bad straps, not the worst, but not the best either. However, if you don't like leather, you could go for a NATO strap. I don't know about this one. It's the only one I could find that really I thought suited quite well. Um, it's Bond-ish style because it's only one stripe. It's the black and grey. It's nice muted tones. It kind of goes with the dial. It's not my favourite, but it's one of the ones that I thought I'd show you guys anyway. However, if you want to go even more outlandish, here is another Marine Nationale in orange and white. Again, I'm trying to match it to some of the colours on the dials. So you've got white on the indices and you've got white on the printed minute tracks. And you've got orange, of course, from all the hands. Very, very nice, I think, with that chronograph hand and the small seconds. It goes very well together. However, if you want to try something completely different or you want to just go a bit more understated, this is a silicone strap. These ones I'm actually really excited about from AliExpress. They cost me, I think, I'd have to look it up, actually, I don't remember, but I've got them on everything, including my Christopher Ward. They're quick release, but they do not come with spring bars, so you will need to also buy spring bars. So loom time, and unfortunately this is a gone in 60 seconds job. Normally I would show you 15 minutes of footage sped up. I sped it up and after about six minutes, there was just nothing left of this Casio. It is a chronograph, it's not a diver, so you don't need loom. But honestly, at this point, I don't know why they include it. So likes and dislikes, well, it is a budget slide rule watch. So if you wanna go for that old school pilot style and you wanna just do some calculations on your wrist and you don't wanna whip out your phone, which let's be honest is the logical thing to do, you can use the Casio. And also it's very much cheaper than the competitors. So you've got the likes of the Seiko Flightmaster or the Citizen Nighthawk, both very nice watches, but a lot more expensive than this little Casio, I can tell you that. Uh, I'll pop up prices as well there if you wanna have a look. Also, despite the fact that this is quite a busy dial, there's a lot of stuff going on on it, it's still very legible from almost any angle. I was kind of shocked because when I saw this watch, I thought, oh, this is going to be completely unreadable. I'm just going to be looking at numbers and they're just going to be clashing off each other. It doesn't. It actually fits really, really well together. The color scheme is simple. It's black and white. You've got the little pop of color off the orange. and It's really easy to read. They've also gone with 50 meters of water resistance. So that could be enough for a daily. I'm not, as I say, Casio are always a bit stingy with their water resistance. 50 meters to them could actually mean more however some of the dislikes on this one this is a marmite bracelet for those of you who aren't familiar with marmite they're a slogan they're a british food stuff in the uk and their slogan is you either love it or you hate it this is a marmite bracelet you're going to love it or hate it with the looks you will hate the rattliness i'll be honest it's a casio bracelet you've got a press clasp it's not going to be special it's not going to be spectacular but with four levels of micro adjust, it's not too bad in terms of getting a fit, actually. Actually, I'll scratch that. It's very good in terms of getting a fit. I have to give it some sort of credit on that one. No date on this one, however, though, it means that wearing it as a daily is a bit harder. Unlike the Nighthawk or the Flightmaster, it has no date. I really wish watches came with a date on almost all of them because I just wish they had the date for functionality. Also, how the hell do you use the bloody bezel? I can't figure it out. And I looked everywhere in the manual. There is no instruction as to how to use a slide rule bezel. Like they show you, oh, we, this is how you use a chronograph and this is how it works and this is how you press the pushers. But it tells you nothing about the bezel. It tells you nothing about how to do any calculations. I, they just seem to assume that you'd know how to use the watch, which for Muppets like me who decided to buy this one just to have is no good. Now I'll try and pop a video in somewhere down in the description for someone who can explain how to use a slide rule, but honestly for me, it's a missed opportunity. Casio should have included it in the manual. 
So guys, there you have it, the Casio MTP4500. A really good looking watch actually, surprisingly good on a couple of different straps and a very, very good piece. I just wish they'd have included an instruction manual on how to actually use the thing. It's very easy to use the actual movement itself. It's a chronograph movement. It works as you'd expect, but no instructions at all as to how to use the slide rule bezel. Now, if you want to have a look on the internet, I'll see if I can find an explanation as to how a slide rule bezel works. If you want to teach yourself, I know it's a bit of a redundant technology, but then again, lots of things in watches are these days. So hopefully you've enjoyed the review. And if you have, make sure to like it, comment down below if you think this is a watch that might be for you. And subscribe if you haven't already to the channel. We're getting close to 1,000 subscribers now. It'd be great to hit that mark. So thank you very much for watching. I have been your host, DK. This has been the Watchtower Watch Reviews. And I will see you guys next time.